This is our first lesson on functions. Functions are extremely important in programming in C++. This is not a topic that you're going to get away from. You will always be writing functions for this class, in any case, from here on out. So I want to begin by giving you motivation for why we have functions. So take a look at this example here. Look at this main program. The lines of code are function calls. See how this reads. It reads very easily. Display greetings, gather data, calculate, output, sign off, return zero. What we're doing in each one of these statements is we're redirecting the execution to other blocks of code that reside someplace else. And we've created an outline for our program. Okay, so the motivations include it helps you to organize uh, your code, break the larger project down into smaller pieces. It allows groups of coders to work on one large program. Also, it allows you to reuse code. For instance, you write a block of code that's going to calculate a square root, and you need to calculate square roots in many different places. So you write the code once, and then redirect the execution of the program to that block of code numerous times with a function call. And lastly, it allows you to carry code from one project to another very easily. So let's start by looking at the format of a function. This first line here is what we call the uh, function header. And I always think of a function header as having three things, as it does, a return type, a function name, and then a formal parameter list. The formal parameter list can be empty, and that means that you send nothing to the function. It expects nothing to be sent to it. The parameters are variables that are declared local to the function, and they're going to be instantiated with values that you pass to the function. The return type is the type of value that is returned or sent back to the calling function, which for now we'll just think of as being main. In the function body, you have local variable declarations, you have statements, and then you have a return statement that returns the value of the return type. So whatever this return type is, you're going to send back a value that's going to instantiate that. Does it look familiar? Well, it should. This is exactly what you do when you write a main program. So you've actually written functions already. The return type, int. The name, main. The formal parameter list, in this case, is empty. Local variables, here we have a character. Our statements, a do-while loop. Return zero. Zero is the value of the return type, in this case, an int. And sure, main is just another function, but it's the one function that every program must have. Okay, I'm going to go through several examples here, and I'm going to start with a very simple one. I'm going to look at the three aspects of functions. They include the declaration of a function right here. This is the prototype. I'm declaring the function the call of the function, or the invocation of the function, and lastly, the definition. Prototypes go before main, definitions after main. And of course, the call or the invocation of the function would happen in main and can be done in other functions. Okay, this is a very simple function. It returns nothing, you send it nothing. You send no information to the function, it returns nothing back, and you might be thinking, well, then what in the world does it do? Well, in this case, all it does is it outputs something to the screen. So, again, the prototype, the definition, and the call. When the compiler comes through, it's going to compile this line. It'll put that function on the function table. Perhaps it's easier to think of as a list of declarations of functions. The compiler will refer back to it. So it gets to main, says, yes, okay, that's main, and, ah, here's a function call. How does it know that it's a function call? Well, it reads greetings, thinking, well, possibly that is a, uh, a variable, but when it hits this open parenthesis, then it knows it has a function call. It looks to see that there's nothing being passed, and so it looks in its function table for a function called greetings that has nothing uh, passed to it or has no parameters because nothing is passed to it, it looks in the function table and sees, yes, I do. Greetings, it has an empty parameter list, so this is okay. This function is being used correctly. It goes on, sees the return zero, fine. 
goes down here to uh, compile the definition of the greetings function. Yes, okay, that matches my declaration. This is all good code. I'm returning nothing because it's a void. So everything's cool in the compile stage. Then during execution, we start with main. We hit the greetings. Control passes to the function here. In this case, no values of arguments are sent to any parameters. We execute the cout statement. We hit the return, and control passes back up here. And we continue by executing the return 0 on main, and that ends the uh, function, uh, the program. Let's take a look at another example. It's a little bit more complex. In this case, this function, display number, it has a parameter. We're going to have to send something to fill that parameter. But it's a void function. It returns nothing back. It's called display number. OK, once again, during the compile stage, display number goes on to the function table or goes into our list of functions. We have a declaration for that function. And it has a parameter. Now, once again, the parameter list is a common delimited list of type and name. So type name, type name, type name. Remember, always type name. In this case, an int and the name of the parameter is a number. So it goes on and it compiles main and says, yes, OK, we declare Bob to be a local variable. And then it gets down here to display number. When it sees the open parenthesis, then it says, aha, OK, this is a function call. And uh, Bob, which is an integer, is being sent. So it looks in its function table and says, ah, I've got a function called display number that expects an integer, so this line of code is being used properly. It's a function call expecting an integer. OK, so it goes up there and looks and says, yes, that's, that's fine. Hits the return 0, OK, goes down here and compiles the code for the function definition. Uh, it'll match that, that uh, function header with the uh, prototype, make sure that that's same. And uh, this is an OK line of code and a return, returning nothing to match that void. OK, that's fine. Now we go to the execution stage. All right, so now we're executing. We start with main. And our first call, we create an integer variable called Bob, give it a value of 5. We execute this function uh, call. Now, what happens at this point is that the value of Bob, which is 5, that is copied into this parameter, a number. Okay, so control passes down to the function. A number takes on the value 5. Okay, so that's 5. That's output. We hit the return. That takes us back up here to the statement just after the function call, all right, which in this case happens to be return 0. And that is the end of that example. Let's take a look at another one. OK, in this case, uh, I'm going to leave my little blue arrows out of this, and I'm going to go through the compile stage uh, with my pen. OK, so we are going to compile, starting here. The compiler says, OK. I've got a declaration for a function. It returns an int. Its name is get number. It has an empty parameter list. That's the prototype. Goes on the list. OK? Then it hits main and says, yes, OK, main looks good. I have a variable of type int named Bob. OK, I'm going to assign to Bob what? I'm going to assign to Bob the value that is returned by this function call. Again, it sees the open parenthesis and says, aha, that's a function call. So it goes to its, its uh, list of prototypes, sees that it has a function called get number. It has an empty parameter list. Nothing has been sent. And so that's fine, because there is no parameter. So the function call is a good call. It matches the prototype. Okay. Return 0, yeah, it's happy with that. It comes down here and compiles uh, the definition of the function. It matches this function header with the prototype up above. This is a fine declaration. Uh, good syntax here, good syntax here. We read in 
uh, value to get, which is an integer. So this is an integer. It returns an integer. That's OK. Compiling is complete. Everything works out fine. Let's go through the execution. We start with main, create Bob. Bob is assigned to get number. So at this point, control for this function passes down to here. No parameters need to be copied or arguments sent to any parameters. Control passes down here. We declare value to get. We prompt a user. We input a value and we return that value back up here to the function call. I like to think of a function call that returns a value to be a box. So whatever is entered down here, let's suppose that somebody says, well, I'm going to enter six then the value to return is going to be 6. That's sent back up here to the box. What used to be in the box is a function call. What is now there is the number 6. And that is what gets assigned to Bob. Okay, again, back to execution. We hit the return 0, and that's the end of that function. Okay, let's look at a, an extensive program here. <clears throat> we have three functions. We have our greetings. We have our get number and we have a new one called average. It returns a float and it takes two parameters. Okay, in this example I'm going to introduce a new concept and that is the const parameter. This is your second use of the qualifier const. When you put const in front of a parameter, uh, functions parameter list, what you're telling the compiler is do not let this parameter here and this parameter in this case, do not let them change in the function. So if you attempt to change val1 or val2 in the function, then it's going to throw an error. This is a way you protect yourself. And there's other reasons to have const parameters, but for now, you protect yourself. Don't ever think that you're a perfect programmer. You might say, well, I'm not going to change these values. I wouldn't make that mistake. Yes, you can make that mistake. And of course, when you're calculating an average of two values, you certainly don't want to change the inputs. Always ask yourself, should this function be allowed to change that parameter? And if there's no reason for it to do so, then slap a const on it. So these functions get added to the list of prototypes. Okay, we go through main, uh, compile. These are fine lines of code, that's fine, that's a function call, greetings, nothing sent to it, matches the prototype. Same thing with get number, get number, and then the average. I'm going to assign to the average, average, and I'm sending Bob and Sue. Now what's Bob and Sue? Bob and Sue are floats. Okay, so this is a float, and this is a float. So it's going to look at its, its uh, list of prototypes, and it sees that it has an average that it will accept a float. This is a good function call and a compilable line of code. Return zero, fine, comes down here and starts compiling the uh, definition of the function. The header matches the prototype exactly. We have two local variables, uh, sum and average. We assign to sum the sum of the two parameters. Average is assigned, sum divided by two, and then we're going to return average, which is a float because that's a float and everything compiles just fine. What about the execution stage? We start at main, create Bob, Sue, and the average. We execute greetings, so control passes to the greetings function. We execute this assignment, control will pass to get number, we'll get a number from the user and assign it to Bob, get a number from the user and assign it to Sue, and then we hit the average. This is at runtime, control is going to pass from here down to the function. The values of Bob and Sue, and let's suppose that we enter 5 and 7 here, these values are copied into val1 and val2. They will be ordered in this fashion. And control passes down to then the average function. This is 5 and this is 7. Sum and average come into existence. So the sum of 5 and 7, which is 12, is assigned to sum. Average is assigned sum over 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6. And 6 is going to be returned as the float value. 
control passes to here. And again, you can think of this function call as being a box. And the value of 6 is passed back up. Replace this function call with 6. 6 is assigned to the average. And we hit the return, and that's the end of that. Now, I've simplified the definition of the function considerably. And even though it's only one statement, we still do need those curly braces. All I have is return val1 plus val2 divided by 2. OK? This is a float. That's a float. The sum's a float divided by an integer is a float. Did I need the local variables sum and average? No, actually, I didn't. I did that simply to show what could be done, and I'm doing this now to show what is actually more efficient. The second thing I want to point out is I'm passing an integer to a float parameter. But that integer can be promoted to type float. There's no problem there. 3.1 is a float. It's a constant, but that's OK, right? a constant literal. That can be passed to val2. Remember, val1 and val2 are, are new variables, and their values are copies of the arguments passed in the function call. And of course, we return the sum divided by 2. In this example, I want to point out something else here. Here's the prototype, cylinder volume. Look at the parameter list. I have const float, const float. What's missing here? What's missing is the name of the parameter. You don't actually have to have a name in the prototype. Remember, this is the prototype. However, this is a very bad practice. Now, here's the reason. Eventually, all you're going to see about this function is its prototype. The code itself gets hidden. You don't see that, and you don't know how it works. So when you look at the prototype to figure out how the function works, well, how do you know what to send it? Here's the prototype. The Volume of a cylinder is calculated by two floats and returns a float. The volume is pi r squared h, radius and height. Do you send it to radius and height, or is it the height and the radius? Which is it? You don't know by looking at that prototype, and you're not going to see the definition of the function. So when you output the radius, what is it you're outputting? Is it 3, or is it 5? It's a really good idea to include the names of the parameters in the prototypes. And in fact, I'll hold you to that standard. OK, one more example, blank lines. Again, here's our prototype. All right. The parameter is a short. That's the number of lines that you want to have blank lines of. Remember, it's const is good. Back up here in main, I'm going to call blank lines, passing it 5. So. I have then 5 gets copied into num lines. So this is 5, and I have a for loop that runs from 1 to 5. And all it does is output 5 end lines. So I can use this anywhere I want in a calling function in main to output whatever, you know, how, whatever number of blank lines that I want to make my output look fine. So those are the basics of using functions. There's a lot more to learn about functions. Uh, in a quick review, you have a prototype, you have a call, and you have a definition. The use of const, I'm going to hold you to. And that's the end of the session on the basics of functions.